Hey everyone, Ben here. Today I'm here with Mahmoud. How are you, man? Yeah, everything's good. How, how about you? Yeah, all good. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, yeah, well, to the listeners, we'll be discussing a very, very interesting case study. Uh, Mahmoud actually started and launched an affiliate site on, on an expired domain. And in just five months, I believe he's now doing uh, over $2,000 a month. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. That, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> um, is it uh, your, your first site that you built on, on an expired domain? No, no. Actually, I think it's my third or fourth site that I that I built from uh, from exp- like from uh, from auctions. Mm-hmm. So it was built like on an expert domain that I bought from Good Eddie's auctions, mm-hmm. and yeah, and I think it's my second or third like successful experiment with the uh, auction domains. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, how did you get started? Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, man. Okay, yeah, so I started with the internet marketing like eight or nine years back. So when I was like 13 years old, uh, yeah, I was just like growing like Facebook pages, like, you know, by <laughs> spammy, like by spammy techniques and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Then I just like monetized these pages with uh, Google AdSense. So I basically like put some random stuff on my on like random website and start like to push these posts in, in Facebook pages. And yeah, I was making like, like, like good money like back then, but then Facebook closed my pages and AdSense also closed my account like for three times. So yeah, but I like, but I got like things going, going on uh, like since back then. And then um, probably 2017, I started to take things like more a bit seriously. And yeah. Uh, and since then, like I've been working like on SEO, started to study SEO and build like uh, affiliate sites. And now in 2020, we do have a portfolio of affiliate websites or niche sites. Uh, we currently have probably over like eight or nine sites plus a 30 person team successfully. <laughs> Finally. Amazing. Yeah. It consists from like writers and editors and people who do outreach and, and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, what's the size of the team in total? We have almost like, I think 28 or 30 persons, something like something like that. Wow. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. And that's for your content writing business as well. Right. So everything. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Because we recently also launched a service, which is a content service also for niche sites. So that's why we do have a lot of writers, editors Mm -hmm. and stuff Mm -hmm. like that and project Mm -hmm. project managers as well. Mm-hmm. So, how did you get the the idea for for the uh, for the site? Did you did you first off actually find the niche um, and okay. uh, and kind of planned on it, or did you just randomly stumble on the on the domain that kind of matched the niche uh, on auctions? Yeah, no, no, yeah. The thing is, uh, I usually like to like explore like auction domains like every two or three days and see what are the good opportunities there, and then I stumbled upon this uh, domain. Um, it was like an like probably twenty years old domain in that 20. particular niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty. <laughs> it was like from probably two thousand and one or something or twenty or two thousand. Uh, anyway, so I took that. So I saw the domain. It it did not have like a lot of good links. So it wasn't like like big authority domain at all. But I th- but I thought like the domain name was cool. It's pretty aged. So I think it will help us like skipping the sandbox period. And it did. So I bought the website. I bought the domain, sorry, for like probably $300 or something. So nothing mm-hmm. crazy. Uh, but it has like few good links and pretty much that's it. And I built the site on it. And probably just in one month or something, ranking started to go up. Returning to your question. Uh, so I did not have the niche in my mind before finding the domain. So I found that domain first. And then I started to think how I can monetize this domain. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it's an um, EMD? Um, <coughs> is that match uh, no, domain? No, 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 no. It's uh, like a brand name. It was like a magazine, but they uh, just closed, yeah, like many years back and I restarted everything. And even right. the good thing that uh, the domain name has uh, like a monthly search volume. Um, yeah, because it was a very active uh, like magazine like back then. Oh, so like so, they're actually yeah. actively searching for the domain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah, like 200 like or 300 uh, searches per month, uh, which is pretty good because domain popularity also plays a big role in, in like in in expired domains and in domains in general. Yeah. And with these recent updates, the more popular uh, the domain is, the better ranking you will have eventually. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I often read that when you go with an expired domain, like this is actually an, a mistake that I made first off with, uh, with my first expired domain. So I bought an expired domain and uh, it was actually Italian, but then I wanted to, to rank with uh, .it for the English market just because of the amazing links it had. And I also yeah, yeah, switched yeah. up the niche. This was a big mistake when I was first starting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so I think it's super important that you keep um, the same niche um, and yep. covering the same topic as it did in the past um, so that you can kind of get a boost. Exactly. There. Yeah, 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 exactly. Actually, for uh, expired domains, the most important thing is that uh, you keep the main, um, the main like niche or category. So you need to keep up like the relevancy. It should be 100%, almost 100% the same. Uh, you don't need to switch niches or stuff like that because if Google knew that, that the, like the niche like has changed or Google like become like suspicious about the domain, uh, you probably will not rank at all. And I saw like sometimes people even remove that domain from index. So you put hmm. a lot of content and stuff like that and people like, like penalize the domain. So, uh, yeah. So you need to like, to be like 100% relevant to, to your uh, expired domain. Mm -hmm. And what is your approach for, so uh, I'm guessing that you have some kind of a um, solution that allows you to browse through the expired domain on, on Google that is auction a bit faster. Um, how do you do yeah. that? I would say uh, we use, uh, you know, the website called uh, expireddomains.net. Mm -hmm. So it allows us to put like some filters. So I just like, uh, like put probably like trust flow filter from Majestic. Uh, and then I go like through the domain. I make sure that like it's not like being like spammed. I go also with the web archive. I check if the domain has been used as a PBN or something like that before. Mm -hmm. uh, I check the anchor text as well in Ahrefs. I make sure that the anchor text is normal. Like, like it has like brand name anchor text and naked URL like anchor text because they are the most common uh, anchor text. Um, I think that's more or less what I look for. So I look for like one, it's not spammed. Number two, the anchor texts are normal. Number three, uh, the trust the flow uh, in according to Majestic is like- And what, what metric do you, uh -huh, above 10, okay, okay. Yeah, sometimes I go to be honest like eight or nine, but I mean like 10 is the standard. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah. To be honest, like with my experience, I don't really believe that the benefit from the expired or better to call them aged domains, um, mm -hmm. the benefit doesn't really come from um, from the links because uh, in, in your in your example, yeah. I don't I don't believe that your DR is super huge or that you have a ton of links, but it's the yeah. age, right? It's the age behind exactly. the domain that really allows it to boost like yeah. crazy, right? Yeah, let me let me let, let me tell you something. Um, like, like uh, the DR of this website, yeah, was very low. It doesn't have like it probably had like twenty referring domains or something or thirty maximum. But the thing is, uh, the domain has, uh, as I told you, like um, a lot of search uh, per month, uh, which like contributes to the to its success. Plus, also the age of, of the domain usually allows you to skip uh, the sandbox period, which get things faster. But I would say the main um, contribution to its success is the content and publishing content. And that's another story we will talk about. But uh, for the domain, it's all about the um, domain popularity. And that's number one. Number two, um, the age of the, of the domain. I, th mm -hmm. I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for the actual content, what, what did you do with the content? Did you map out all the content in the beginning, do all the research, okay. and then just smash down yeah. the content like crazy? Or did you like periodically <laughs> add a bit of content, notice, okay, we can uh -huh. also do this, we can also do that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, what we do actually is, um, we first of all, before launching any website, we uh, create a content plan, okay? This content plan usually consists for affiliate websites, consists of 70% affiliate content and 30% info content. And uh, what we do and um, what contributes the most is uh, we focus on a certain category, it's like subcategory or sub niche inside the niche itself. So let's say you have a niche, let's say it's uh, hardware. Uh, we focus on, for example, um, keyboards only, for example, okay? And then we push a lot of content in this subcategory, which is keyboards. And once we start getting the rankings going up and we start to see some, uh, like Google gives us like some authority and some relevancy, uh, we start leverage this huge relevancy on this topic to another related topics. 
So we can start targeting like, for example, mouse monitors, like anything related to the hardware. So that's what, 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 what we basically do. We start with like, uh, like, like focusing on certain category, like small category, and we push all of the content for it, for our initial content plan. And then once we start to rank and see the, some good results, like good keywords in page number two, page number one, we start targeting another uh, categories and so on. So that's basically how it works inside mm -hmm. our company. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome and yeah here we come to um to my number one question that i'm super super excited <laughs> to ask like you you mm -hmm. mentioned that uh, you have a lot of keywords that are on like when they start getting to positions uh, like five ten the first page basically um since yeah. you shared the, the url of your site um with me um so mm -hmm. thanks so much for your trust with that i just took a look and you have a ton you have a ton of snippets Right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm just wondering how did you did you manage to secure so many snippets? Like the, there's this common advice that I hear from others. They say, yeah, just check the current snippet and just try to make mm -hmm. it better. But that advice is just yeah. a bit. Well, it doesn't really Generic, help you that much. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say um, it's all about the like your on page. So it was all about like the on-page optimization that we did in the in the in the articles uh, itself. So what I do basically, I go to Ahrefs and I look for the like main keywords. And when I pick the main keyword, I try to to organize the format of the article, which allows Google to understand how the article flows, starting from the introduction up to like the final thoughts. So what I do is like the headings. The headings are so important. So we try to put the main keyword in H2 and then we start listing the products like below the H2, like in bullet points or something like that, which allows Google to understand very easily. Like when someone search for the main keyword, let's say best keyboards for gaming, for example. So I could do like an H2 with best keyboards for gaming in 2020, for example. And I start like listing the products like, like all together below that heading. Um, and then uh, Google start to understand the article better and then it will feature you as a feature snippet. So it's all about like the formatting of the article. That's number one. We try to keep it simple. We organize our H2 and H3s because they are really, really helpful when it comes to feature snippets. And second thing is uh, basically the, the anchor text of our internal links. It also helps a lot. So mm -hmm. that's what we, what we basically do. Um, yeah, also there's something else. Uh, I would recommend always like check your, again, your, your, your headings because you need also your products. Uh, for example, like, you know, the format of the buying guides, which is like best keyboard for gaming. Let's say uh, that's our buying guide. So we have uh, H, like H1, H2, H3. So you need to manage your headings. You need to put your products in H3. You need to put uh, your main keyword as H2 and the title of the article is, uh, is, is in H1. So Google can understand like the headings, like what headings are related to others. And yeah, then you can start What would be, them. so for example, if the H1 is best keyboard, best keyword for gaming, yes, right? Yes, Since yes, that's yes, the main yes, one. yes. What would be the H2, yep. what would be the, the yeah. H3? The H2 could be like uh, our list of the best gaming keyboards or the, our list of the best keyboards for gaming any, and like anything like that. So for example, after the introduction, you need to start reviewing the products, right? So before starting the review, you can put an H2 with, let, 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 let's say, the 10 best keyboards for gaming in 2020, and then you start reviewing the products. Or you can put something like our list of keyboards for gaming, and, and, and then you start like number one, keyboard X, number two, keyboard Y, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, you prefer to use H3s for the products instead of H2s? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah, we did all of our experiments like based on these like H2 and H3s. We did a lot, and we found that uh, better results come when we when you put the products in H3s and you put your main keyword in H2 once above exactly above the product reviews. Mm -hmm. So, and we implement this like across all of our, our our websites, and we usually get a lot of feature snippets. With, that that with actually it. makes sense because I just remembered that now one of my my sites affiliate sites. I changed it up. I went from using H2s as products to H3s and yeah. it got a few feature snippets so that you could be yeah, you're probably yeah. onto something here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so just wanted to, to ask you, so at the moment you're still with Amazon Affiliate, right? Um, and uh, mm. since the, the brutality, since the brutal thing that they did by cutting the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, fees, yeah. 
Um, are you going yeah. to be changing to any other partnerships, partnership affiliate programs, or just still staying yeah. with them? Yeah, uh, let's say first, first of all, yeah, I will stay with Amazon, but that doesn't mean that we will not do anything like 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 outside Amazon because actually we were doing that. We were doing like some private affiliate deals, and we also like doing some ads here and there. Um, not on this particular website, but I'm talking about the, the uh, like across our mm -hmm. portfolio. So we have some experiences with other programs rather, rather than Amazon. Uh, and for this particular site, uh, we try to to contact other like manufacturers and do some deals with them. And actually, we got an offer with 15% commission rate on a product that Amazon gave us like 3%. Uh, and it's a big store in that niche. So we are experimenting this uh, and I think we will see some good results. So I would say, yeah, we will try to, uh, to diversify our monetization methods on this particular website, um, along with uh, putting some ads and, some, and stuff like that. So we were not sticking to Amazon 100%. Yeah, completely agree with this. This is also something I wanted to ask you. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned that you have, we should talk about later the plans for the future, but you mentioned that you have actually planned um, an opt-in, um, implementing an opt-in and also implementing a digital product. So I'm just wondering yeah. how, how do you plan to do that and how, do you, how does a digital product work out on other sites? What kind of successes you've had with that? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Uh, yeah, because actually we had another uh, website that we, we already implemented that. Uh, we did some like email marketing. We like we have been like getting like probably over fifty or seventy uh, email per per day, mm -hmm. and then we have created our like kind of ebook, which is like guide to let's say our our our, our website again is about hardware and or or let's say gaming for example. Mm -hmm. So let's say we did an ebook like your guide to I don't PC gaming or gaming console anything like that. And then uh, after collecting some emails, we start like pro like pushing like some f in like some uh, helpful guides in the in the beginning, and then we start selling them so some ebooks. So that's like the digital product we we basically re uh, rely on. We tried this in one niche site, and we had some good results. Not amazing, but I mean good, pretty good results. Um, and we will start implementing that in that uh, particular uh, website soon. So that's how it works usually. And you do you kind of for the opt-in do you already offer a free book or do you only sell it on the on the back end ah, the emails no we sell it on the back end so i collect the emails by saying for example uh, we will send you some helpful tips and tricks and, and stuff like that or for like, example before be, before you go make sure to check out like anything so we sell right. it only right yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, any info on the percentages so for example if amazon affiliate represents like 100 percent, how uh, much of the email earnings would it be no uh i would say uh you mean like like our income from amazon affiliate um no no, no. so i mean um just like the percentage that you would get in terms of the earnings um mm -hmm. For, for your info product, for your ebook, right? How, how many uh, sales no, no, no. percentage does it represent? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 got you. I think we got like probably, I would say one or two percent, I would say up to three percent, something like that. So it's not that big. So that's why. Uh -huh. I so you, Amazon is still the good, main one. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Amazon makes up like probably 70 percent or 60 percent of, of our income. The other is ads, and then we have like small portion of digital products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but ads, but ads still, have been working yeah. out well for you. The digital products or Amazon? Uh, no ads. Um, so display yeah. ads. Yeah, ads. We we just started like just before the virus thing, so the CPMs are quite low right now. <laughs> yeah, because advertisers are not like putting some uh, some some money into in, in into ads. Uh, but if things were back to normal, yeah, we will be doing some good numbers with ads. We do with. Do you uh, have any estimation? So, for example, from from Amazon, you're making two thousand per month. Um, yeah. How much would you say you will be making from um, oh. ads, and how many page views per yeah. month? I would say from this from this uh, website, we would be making probably four hundred uh, four hundred dollars from from ads. Yeah, because uh, the the keyword CPMs are quite high for these affiliate terms because most of our traffic goes to uh, affiliate terms like best blah blah you know these type mm -hmm. of keywords and these type of keywords usually have uh, pretty good cpms 
So I would say we would be doing like 400 or 500 minimum per month from ads. Yeah. And how many page views per month would you say? Uh, we currently have, I would say, uh, like 20, 20,000 page views per month, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, and what are your plans for, for the future other than implementing the digital product, the email marketing uh, for this site? Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, we had like, as I told you, like before launching, we do like our content plan. And this content plan like contain like several products or several subcategories. So once we get like, like the first category or, si or, or, the, or the first two categories like ranking and everything is good, we start uh, publishing content on the other categories as well. So, and that's, uh, we, we, and we just started with, with like doing this like recently. Uh, so we started to go like to the third category we have on the website and we are just going on. So we have a content plan that we will need like probably 700,000 words to finish it. So yeah, so we still have a long, long, long journey with, with many keywords. On Amazing. So you're definitely yeah. planning to go big on this site, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm planning like uh, to be like in the top like three, uh, like in this niche. So I hope amazing, so. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Um, Thank you. Any any recommendations, resources, or any other tips that you would uh, recommend from from other sites uh, to the listeners? The, yeah, definitely. I would say uh, first of all, uh, to rank well, you need to prove to like to Google that you are like you have, uh, like you are an expert in this niche. So to prove your expertise, you need to, to work for sure on on-page and off-page. For the off-page, we all know like the backlink story, so we're not, we're not like mention it, but for the on-page, to prove your expertise, you need to, first of all, publish high quality content. That's the first point. Second point is to cover as many topics as you can and to answer as many users' queries as you can. So let's say you are talking about keyboards, uh, you must, uh, go through like keyword uh, explorer for, for for example from Ahrefs, and you can check like how many questions are people asking in this like keyboard gaming kit stuff, and then if you cover like let's say sixty or seventy percent of these questions that people ask uh, ask on a monthly basis, Google will reward you because you are answering like more questions to the users and Google really care about the user experience. So if you really did that, you will prove to Google that you are an expert in this in this particular niche. And eventually you will get uh, better rankings along with off-page work for all the off-page work you definitely need good links from authority websites to prove or to like for google it's another proof that other big websites are sending you votes because every every link is count like vote from other websites mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you did that work on on page and off page all together you will get some amazing rankings for sure yeah maybe maybe it's really important that we mentioned that you you did not build any links to, to this site, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. According to uh, like uh, when we like when we talked to this like about uh, this particular website, we did not build any links, like not at all, and all of our success with it with purely from content and uh, expired domain. Yeah, but on like across our portfolio, we do definitely backlinks for many other websites. And actually, mm -hmm. to take this to take this website to like high levels, like let's say cross five figures per month in terms of profit, we definitely need to work on uh, backlinks. So, so I would say like to get like, like the like good levels of earnings from affiliate websites, we're talking like 2000, 3000, all is fine. I like, I took websites probably up to like $4,000 per month purely from content and it's perfectly fine, but there's like certain stage to cross. You need, I think some uh, yeah. backlinks for. And yeah. for the majority of your links, do you, uh, since you have uh, like a content company, do you write guest posts um, to get the links or do you pay for them? How, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, for links, we like in 2019, we were doing like PBNs, but we completely stopped it. So now we, do, now we are doing like outreach. So we outreach for guest posts. We outreach also for niche edits. Uh, so I do have like two or three um, employees in my company who do like outreach on a like a regular basis uh, and that's how we build our links so yeah pretty much that's it so we pay for it yeah yeah the answer for question and for, with the with the content agency uh, how what what do you do uh, when do you start it uh, what do you yeah. offer people yeah actually uh, yeah that was like uh, we started this company probably like uh, july 2019 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but the problem with that, like, or the idea that, like, came, like, uh, yeah, let's say, uh, in 2017, when I started, like, building affiliate uh, websites, we had this problem, or I had this problem because I didn't have any team yet. Uh, like, I had, like, very small budget. And I needed to build a lot of content, you know. So for any affiliate website, we're talking about like plus one, like one, like one hundred thousand words to start with. Usually, I do that. I do. I do like that. And then I like I had like only two solutions. Like the first solution is go to like with low low quality content with cheap prices, or like the high quality like the high quality content that you have to pay a lot for. So that was a big problem, and it limited my opportunities in the in the beginning. I currently like we worked on solving this problem by hiring people from all over the globe. So we don't focus on like like native countries uh, or native speakers like United States or United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. We look for like like writer from like any like any country, especially like in Egypt. We look for like graduates from like British and American schools and and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they do have like very good English um, English level. And then uh, we hired them as full timers or part timers or whatever. And then we started to be able to publish a lot of content with really affordable prices, but keeping the quality like pretty good. So that's what, so that's what we basically do. Uh, and after that, once we had like the systems in place, the SOPs, the employees, editors, everything, it was like the natural, like the natural, like, pro like progression, you know, to offer, to offer it as a service to help also other people who are struggling with the same problem that they have like limited budget and they want, pretty good content for uh, their like budget. So we worked on this and we currently aiming to be like the best content service at our price ranges. So let's hope so. <laughs> and you also offer something very good, which is the fact that you also upload to WordPress, right? Uh, as an add on yeah, yeah, yeah. do surfer optimization. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, yeah, yeah. Content Wish is a fully managed a content service. Yeah, you can order like content alone, like content writing. But you can mm -hmm. also find services like keyword research, content planning that I take care of like by myself. Because I'm definitely like I'm not a writer and I don't write at all. But yeah, but my work is like basically to plan and to do the keyword research mostly. So we offer this as a service. <clears throat> uh, but the team like do like everything starting from as as, as I told you from uh, writing up to uploading to WordPress with proper images and everything. And also like we do offer for sure like surfer SEO optimization. That I also want to like to talk a little bit about this because Surfer SEO also helped us a lot uh, with our rankings. So after like doing a lot of tests and we saw like good, pretty good results, I decided to implement it in 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 our service, and we offer it also as an add-on in our service. So we do everything awesome. starting awesome. as I told you. Yeah. And uh, if people want to learn more uh, about you, your content service, um, or ask you a question, uh, what's the best place to find you and reach out to you? Yeah, I would say for the content service, uh, they, like the URL or the link is contentwish.com. So contentwish.com, yeah, it's easy. And uh, for my personal website is meetmahmoud.com where you can like ask me anything. Or also you can reach me out like on Facebook or anything else. I will, I usually reply back to as many people as I, as I, as I can. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Any, any less words, any less tips, any books you'd recommend um, be before we wrap this up? Yeah, I would recommend if you are starting out uh, and you can afford to buy a small website or an expired domain, it will really help you uh, like get things going, going like quite faster than normal. Starting with a brand new website is good, but it's not the best solution because you need to wait for, for minimum like six or eight months to start seeing some good results in mm -hmm. most cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be a good, like my main advice. The second thing is that try to... Um, to work on the topical uh, relevancy, try to focus on certain category and publish a lot of content on this category. And then after that, start going towards uh, uh, other subcategories in, in, uh, in your niche. Uh, what else? Yeah, and for backlinks, focus on outreach. You can get some good results. Just make sure that the, the, the website is not like saying we offer guest posts for $100 and stuff like that because, because Google go towards these those links and and it could penalize your website uh, if you do if if you do this so go towards websites that offer guest posts but without saying that we do that you know mm -hmm. yeah um, 
what else? I think pretty much that's it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, Mahmoud, okay. thank you so much for uh, for yeah, joining us today thank and you, sharing all yeah. the all the knowledge. Uh, wish a great day and yeah, speak soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.